Up to now, we've assigned constants and variables directly. Our next step is to change them when conditions change. For that, we're going to use the if-else construct. So let's go back to the playground here. Change the assignments on the bottom. So we have a little bit different here. I'm going to change pi here to size. And I'm going to keep my size 10. And I'm going to add another Boolean variable called isRound. And I'm going to set it to a value of true. The if statement takes a Boolean value. And if true, does a code block inside curly braces. So, for example, I would do something like this. I'm going to put another line here. I'm going to put if is round. And then I put a code block. There's the curly braces. And then I'm going to hit return. And then I'll put some code in here for a formula. And I'm going to do area equals pi times area divided by 4.0. Because that will take the area that I have and make it into a circular area. Now, to see this, I've been using the little sidebar thing but we can also do something a little more robust and use print statement to make values that show up easily. So I'm going to put in here a print statement. And this only works in this playground, by the way. It's not going to work as well in the other playground. And so you put in things with commas here. So I put a string, literal, the area is, and then I put area. All right, now I've got that put in my code in here. I can go down to the bottom here and hit run my code. And if you move the little keyboard thing here, all the way over there, you'll see that underneath it, there is a small dot on top of an icon. And if you hit that, you'll get a console, which will print results for you as you use the print statement. So we got the area here for 10. And being true, we get 78.525. Now I can go ahead and change my is round here. And I can change that to false. Run it again. And now it's 100 because it's taking 10 times 10 and getting 100. And we're getting the area of a square pizza. Boolean expressions are often relations between two values. We use six symbols to describe this relationship. To test if the two values are the same, we use this symbol for equals, using two equal signs to be different from the single equals of assignment. This would be not equals. There's also the greater than and less than for inequalities. Finally, there's the combinations of equals and inequalities. So you have this for greater than or equal to, and this for less than or equal to. I'll use an inequality to determine the pizza size. Now, I'm going to need a string to store this size, so I'm going to add one more line here. And let's pop up our code a little bit here. And I'm going to put in here var, size name, and I'll make that a string, equals, and then just two quotes to make an empty string here. A small pizza is going to be any pizza of size 10 or smaller. So I'm going to add an if statement like this to mark my pizza as small. If size is greater than or equal to 10, then my size name will equal small. And I'm going to print out the results of what a pizza I have by doing print size name pizza name. Okay, now I'm going to go run this. And the console shows a small margarita pizza. All right, now I'm going to go over here and change my size at the top here to 16. Hit run. And now the pizza shows just margarita because it's not a small pizza. Now suppose we wanted to indicate any pizza larger than 10 is a regular pizza. That is all cases that are false for the if statement. We can use else to tell the Swift compiler to do this instead. I can modify my code a little bit to indicate regular pizzas. Now, I'm going to give myself a little space here and put a couple extra returns in here so that we can push that up a bit and see it a little easier. And then I'll put in my else here. So I'll put else and then I get another block and I can press return and then put in size name 
equals regular. All right, and I can now run that when I'm hitting run my code, and you can see I now get a regular margarita on my console. Now, we might want to also mention large pizzas too. Large pizzas would be pizzas that are bigger than size 16. So how do we do that? Now, if else has a block. Now, the block can have anything you want in there, including another if else. So what you would do is nest the if else inside one of these two blocks. In this case, I'm going to say it's stuff that, is, that isn't small, because a large is bigger than a small. So it's somewhere in the else block here. And what I'll do is I'll make this the else, and I'll filter or look for that larger pizza. So we're going to do if, and then again do size. And this time it's bigger than 16. So it's not 16 itself, so I'll just use the greater than. And so if, if size is greater than 16, I'll then put a block in there. And that will be size name equals, and then we'll put large. And I'll capitalize. Now the way I've got this code written, be careful. Because what this is going to do is if it is 16, and then it goes to large, if I leave this out like this, it's just going to go back to regular. And so I don't want to do it that way. Instead, what I want to do is put this size name equals regular inside of an else. And I'm going to change my formatting a little here. I'm going to put the else on a separate line this time. And then take my line here. And add it. And I can now get rid of this. All right, now I can try running this. And I get a regular again, because I still have size of 16. But what if I change this to 17? Now I get a large. Notice the formatting change I made here with this else. You'll notice it's different than this else. This is just a style difference, and you'll see code that's written both ways. And you can get into good arguments about why one is better than the other. It's more just a matter of style. They both work the same way. So be aware that you may see that. But we've got a program that's working pretty well. I can change this number around to anything I want. So let's try 15. Run the code. And I get a regular margarita for 15. But if I make it 5, I get a small. And if I go to 25, I get a large. If else statements are very common and control a lot in our applications. You've seen the basics here, but in our next lesson, you'll learn more advanced techniques with if else, its cousin, the ternary conditional operator, and how all this works in Swift UI. So don't forget to hit subscribe to get all the lessons.